Hi all, hope you are doing good. So, so far I made only 20 videos on Kamunda and I got nearly 15 to 20 responses or a request asking for the same kind of problem. So, what that problem is, okay. So, the thing is when you are hitting to the Kamunda from the post API, this is the format which you use to have in your body to hit any kind of API, right. You have the variables part and then inside you have attributes like attribute 1, attribute 2, attribute 3 inside that you pass the value and mention the type along with that you pass the business key this is not a mandatory so let's just keep it aside okay so you pass this kind of thing okay this is well and good this works absolutely fine no no loss in this okay but uh, suppose you have an application which is a common engine running working fine okay now you have another application from which you want to call one of the API of the Kamunda like you want to uh, call a Kamunda API for decision evaluation or for uh, I can say a workflow initiation uh, that sort of thing okay so when you are calling from some other application to the Kamunda engine in that case like when you are hitting you need to send the body in this format and it is difficult right because if you have 100 variables if you have 200 variables if you have 300 variables Will you write a type string, type string, type integer, type long, everything? No, right? So today what we are going to see is like, okay. Now if you can see this is how we are going to pass and we are going to create. So let me execute this first and then we are going to see what are the steps in which we are going to learn today. Okay. So let me first hit in the traditional format. Uh, okay. So you can see this is a task list, empty task list. And, and the flow on which we are going to experiment this is this one. So in the start form we have three variables attribute 1, 2 and 3 that's it. And then we have a user task which has attribute 1, 2 and 3 and once user task is completed the task is ended that's it. I don't think I need to show how to make this because <laughs> you have followed the uh, playlist and this is like very basic thing okay. So this is what I have deployed and if you can see here process definition native json demo and this is our workflow fine right so this is the traditional way of how we hit it let me refresh it you can see native 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 right claim complete so this is how it traditionally works okay now if I, uh, if I want to hit in this format, let me hit this as well, send, you can see one more task is created, so I will simply click and complete. So this was just to show that it works, okay. Now uh, what are we going to do today? So we are going, uh, simply going to convert this format into this format and before proceeding let me tell you that uh, uh, this process is like you will make one time okay so the complete process there are suppose five steps in this okay so the four steps will remain the same for any kind of data type any kind of pojos any kind of request you say the only thing that will change is the pojo of every time because this time we have three attributes next time we have 100 attributes so for them you will be creating their own pojo classes so that is uh, the only thing that you will be creating for different kinds of re requests remaining four steps will be like only one time effort okay so that is one thing and some people would say that we have a runtime variable, we can uh, create a runtime variable then uh, get the uh, Kamunda runtime variable and then in that we can mention okay this is the attribute, this is the key, this is the value and we can proceed. Yes that we can do but only provided that we want, we our Kamunda engine and our application is same but here it is not the case. Our engine is a different application and the application in which we are writing business logic is a different application. Okay. So the only thing that we are going to today is what are those steps with the help of which we are going to convert this type of body into this type of body. Okay. So as simple as that we have only three attributes and we pass it. Okay. Let's move on to the coding part regarding the workflow and UI. This is our, this is going to be our output. Now getting back to our coding part. So if you can see the green color files. Okay. These green color files are are the files that we are going to add okay the only thing that I want to say is this JSON demo request DTO which is having the attributes right this is the POJO class of my request so this request is going to change for you guys but remaining all that is this 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 and here I am simply uh, trying to call a business logic that's it 
so it it means that this 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 will remain same and this is where you are going to have your pojo class or you can okay okay this is where you are going to have your pojo class now let's move on to our actual uh, coding part so first we created our native json where we gave our attributes and here i am using lambok plugin to create getters and setters i don't think i need to explain you that if you don't know what is uh, lambok you simply uh, go and create getters and setters in this format so this is getter similarly you can create others okay yeah that is fine so you created a pojo with three attributes we are good we are done with this okay and then what we are going to do is we have this thing okay so what we do here is let me show here okay this is a pair dto and this is our final thing okay so here come the value type pair dto what it is doing is for every value right for every value we are going to have okay like i have attribute 1 whose value is value 1 okay that is what i am saying right here attribute 1 is what value 1 but on converting this i am going to have attribute 1 whose value is whose value contains value and type two more attributes okay so this value and type is what i am defining in this dto okay value and type so for every value that i am going to pass its value is going to be assigned to value and it's a simple name that is if it is a uh, like i can say it is fetching the data type of it and that is assigning to type that is what is happening here right so the data type of this value is going to be fetched and it will be assigned to the type variable so with the help of this class called kamunda value type pair dto we are simply converting this line that is this line into this line okay so for that we created this kamunda value pair type pair dto now again if you don't create getters and setters later on you are going to get the deserialization exception so make sure you add the getter and setter okay and this is our constructor i hope this class makes sense okay next we have kamunda custom variables so this is what we are doing is let's suppose we converted this we are done with converting this into this okay so the same class we are going to use for other uh, attributes as well so i can say we got this body now what we are going to do is let's suppose this is a complete value okay now this value we have to put under variables okay so that's what i am doing here i am passing an object and that i am assigning to variables so this is going to be a json object whose key is variable and whose value is whatever i am passing in the object i hope that makes sense okay so here if you can see what is happening this is a complete value which is assigned to a term called variables so for that we created this uh, kamunda custom variable so this is the variables okay i hope that makes sense so first we created the kamunda value type pair dto and then we created custom kamunda variable and we are good nothing else i hope uh, for this uh, this much is clear okay now what we are going to do is we are simply going to make use of that okay so here kamunda compatible native json demo request dto okay if the term seems very much complex here what i am doing is if you can see this class native json demo request dto so i am taking this class and i am getting each value of that into my i can say setters okay so i am going to get attribute 1 and i am going to convert into the kamunda format i am going to get attribute 2 from that i am going to convert into kamunda format i am going to get attribute 3 and i am going to convert into kamunda format so here instead of simply assigning the value which i am getting i am calling this function so this function what it is doing it is simply creating the new object of kamunda value type pair dto if you have seen that class this class where i am passing each value and the value and type is object is getting created and it is going to be assigned it to attribute 1 so here what happened first i passed attribute 1 value 1 and that value got converted to this and then that that value got assigned to attribute 1 okay so i hope this makes sense so let's say this is the complete value which i am getting out of this create value type pair and that is going to be assigned to attribute 1 so if i can say this kamunda compatible native json uh, request dto is nothing but this much part okay 
I know this kind this will be like kind of confusion so you can pause you can rewind you can see it again you try and try to do hands on along with the video but once you do it you will get to know you will get a clear picture okay so at the end of this class execution we are getting with this much value now after that we are going to simply assign the object of this class and create a new object of custom variables so on creating a new object of this basically we are passing the value that we had to variables so that's how we are getting the uh, required uh, i mean this much this much object we are going to get okay so i hope that makes sense now how am i using it okay so basically i have a controller let me close all the unnecessary uh, classes okay i have a controller in which i am passing this native json demo request dto which is nothing but this body so i am passing this complete body and that's it and then i am calling uh, this code will be available on the github i'll post the link in the description so basically and that body i am passing it and i am calling a service so this service is going to do what it is first going to call a function to create this and then it is going to call a i mean it is going to create object for this object for this object for this and then this object will be formed which will be assigned to variables and this request will be formed which i am going to call a, a call to a commander okay so this body is got converted into this and after that i am going to call this url okay not that one yeah so uh, let me show you what is happening so here we got the body and then i am calling a function which i have defined in the commander request service so this request service is like just making use of those model classes nothing else okay now in this service what is happening this is the request that i got so first i am going to create a request of commander native json request dto so this is nothing but the commander format of attribute 1 2 and 3 okay here i am going to get the object of attribute 1 in the commander format get the object of attribute 2 object of attribute 3 and i am assigning it to this variable okay and then i am creating a uh, what i can say uh, an object of commander custom variables and in which i am passing this complete body so it is again i am repeating that so in the line 19 20, uh, 20 and 21 i uh, i uh, was able to create this this and this and on the line number 24 i am able to create like assign this complete value to this variable and this object i am getting here as a common custom variable after that i am simply making a call okay so making a call to which making a call to this url that is the api with which we generally use okay the api that i generally used to call with the native format that url i am going to use it okay because now i have this body i need to simply call this okay i hope this makes sense now uh, for sure you will be saying this hard coded thing should not be recommended but i don't want to uh, again add this into configuration and make uh, people confused who are not aware of Uh, again fetching the value from the configuration file and all so i hope that makes sense for you and uh, it is like easy for people who are not aware, aware of the configuration by which they will be fetching value from the configuration file so basically uh, i am uh, simply putting the value here i can say hard coded this okay so you can uh, have this value in the configuration file try to get it from uh, using at the rate value annotation and put it as a url here okay so here i am creating a rest template and creating a header of content type application json and i am simply uh, creating a rest template for which i am passing the url and uh, this http entity which is nothing but a headers and finally expecting the response in the string class uh, either way i am not going to use this but i am expecting it in the string okay now you can say how you got this url so if you can see in the modeler the id of my modeler is native json demo so when i deployed it what will happen i deployed it so my definition key is a native json demo so the url is nothing but the url of the application and then the rest then the process definition and key key value tenant id and tenant id value so here is my tenant id value so how to deploy and all you can watch out for the previous videos today's intention was only 
uh, to resolve the issue that many people had of how to convert this into this i mean uh, i said opposite convert this into this because we have hundreds and thousands of variables and for each of them i cannot write type string type string type integer type long type date so i want to pass in this manner okay yeah i hope that makes sense and finally when we hit this we are getting uh, i can say uh, the control is getting executed i hope that makes sense if you have any queries with respect to this you can write down in the comment section otherwise you have my email id in the about section you can contact me from there as well soon i'll be creating a page on instagram you can follow me there i'll add all those links in the description and along with this github uh, link description in the description as well okay i hope you like my explanation and if it was uh, if you feel that it was helpful for you please do like share comment and subscribe as well so like this is the initial stages of my channel i do really need your support so please do subscribe so that's it for today thank you